Before we start, I have a small question to ask. Have you ever been into the supermarket and have you ever experienced you are in a uh, checkout queue and you have only one or two items but uh, the two people ahead you or one, pe one person ahead you has a hundred items? What you felt that time? Isn't it good this person is give a chance to me because just one item, one minute I can go rather than I have to wait until uh, 30 minutes to complete his checkout process? You fell, right? I felt it many times, but we are not lucky enough to get the chance, but I felt it. So, let's begin next video about the thread, video number 6. Today we are going to talk about yield, weight, sorry, yield, sleep and interrupt. <music> So why we are not talking about the weight here? I think weight is more suitable to discuss with the synchronization. Okay, so let's go into the journey. Okay, let's start with the yield. What the yield method does, right? So if, if you, when you drive in the road, you may see in there's a signing board called yield. What the board tells us? So give the uh, give the chance to the people. Maybe the bikers. Maybe someone has a walking. Give the uh, chance to them, right? So yield method is all about that, but as per the Java official documentation itself, there is no much use for this method because the moment you use this method, you kind of uh, misusing, I mean, uh, you are not getting the use of the multi-threading. So then why this method is exist? This method is exist because if you want to like kind of uh, uh, use in the debugging scenario, if you want to change, if you want to give the more chance to particular thread. So that is the way yield method comes. So how this works? If you have a two different threads, any th thread can call yield method. The moment yield method call, that thread give a hint, a signal to the thread scheduler saying, hey, I am okay, give her the chance to the other threads. It doesn't tell to which thread, but it tells, hey, give her the chance to uh, different thread. So if the scheduler decide to give the chance, then this particular thread who call this yield method go to the waiting state, right? And then other thread will execute, then there is no guarantee the thread, let's say for example, T1 and T2 and T3, we have a three threads, right? So T1 call the yield method. So now either T2 or T3 would get the chance. Let's say assume T3 got the chance. When the T3 got the chance, when T3 finished his work on, on his time slot, there is no guarantee again T1 would get the chance. It's probably T2 because T1 is again the usual waiting thread on a thread uh, pool, thread scheduler, right? So again T1, T2, T3, T1 called the yield method, T2 or T3 will get the chance, right? When the T3 finishes work, there is no guarantee T1 would get the chance back, maybe T2 then after T1. It's, it's up to the thread scheduler, right? So whole point of yield method is give a chance to other threads. So um, when we looking into this, yield is a native method, public void nat public static void native method, right? So why? Because it's not implemented within a Java. So let's let's move into the project and see how this works, right? So you have a, uh, we have our previous uh, uh, example, right? So a little bit clean up. So now good to go. So now when I execute this thread, this this program, right? So you can see is main ending with the main thread, main thread, main thread, main thread and main thread right five out of five times it's ended with the main thread so now what i'm going to do here i'm going to go to uh, this um, printer class and call the thread yield method thread dot yield method right so now execute again now ended with the child 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 we can keep executing this will be the same behavior so what happening here so when the when the uh, thread scheduler give the chance to child thread before it print it it tell hey go ahead and give a chance to some other threads right in this case we only have a um, 
one other thread so it gives the chance to that thread right so now you can see now in this in the particular case you saw the main completely main but that not necessarily to be so now get this case right so it go to the print to the uh, child thread so it give a chance to main thread then came back to the child thread right so but every time child thread come get the chance child thread say hey go and give the chance to uh, main thread so main thread complete the job first so that is the yield method but one thing is to uh, you to understand your platform with when you do this example you may not get the same uh, experience i do or same results i do the reason is certain platform doesn't support that right so if you learn the operating system concept and processor concept very deeply so you may remember something called primitive scheduling right so primitive scheduling is the uh, the process which allow to do this type of work so if your platform does not support for primitive scheduling then you won't get this type of experience right so but as a theory this is how thread yield works right so previous previous video i explained this everything is depend on how your jvm how your J, uh, jra implemented these things right so jra is implementation of a jvm so how the jra implemented these things so if you operate underlying operating system or platform does not support for a primitive scheduling then you won't get this type of results so next one is sleep method sleep method is probably a little common maybe you already used it uh, so i don't think i have to do uh, much explanation about the sleep method so thread sleep method what it does is it it can wait at a certain given time right so that has a two different uh, uh, method signatures overloading so one is a sleep with a number of uh, long milliseconds which is a native method that mean again it is not implemented during the java so the second method is not a native method mean it's implemented within a java so that is called long millisecond and in nanoseconds it's the same as a, a thread join what we learned but thread join had a t three different uh, method signatures right overloading right so join join long millisecond join long millisecond with a nanosecond but sleep don't have uh, sleep method without a parameter right so why because there is no no need to have sleep forever sleep forever is a dead right so you don't want to uh, put the thread into dead state right so there is no sleep forever method so sleep only has two signatures so that is the easiest way to remember and go for an interview if you if you happen to go anyway so uh, when we get the sleep method what sleep does is thread will go to the waiting state for a certain given time there's a one other method called wait method there is a little different between these two methods, the way they handle the locks, right? Still, since we don't know about the locks, I'm not going to talk about that. That is for the next video. So, for now, sleep is go to a certain given amount of time for waiting state. Then how it come back? It come back either waiting time is expired or if you interrupt it, if you interrupt it, then again it will come back. Take this, this type of examples. Let's say one of your friend is say, hey, I want to get a, a nap. I have a headache. I am going to sleep for a 30 minute. Okay. So he put his alarm for a 30 minute and he go to sleep. So he can wake up when his alarm is. Uh, assume he is not putting the snoozing and uh, uh, he is wake up on, on, on top of the alarm. So let's say in a 30 minute he can wake up or else you can go and interrupt hey wake up right boss is looking for you right so you can do that too so that is a interrupt so in the java threads you have a method called interrupt right the moment you execute this interrupt method the whatever the thread is in the waiting state is coming back so that's why when you call the sleep method you have to catch checked exception called interrupt exception it's a checked exception if you if you not catch it a compiler will complain you right so let's see so instead of this thread yield i'm going to call thread dot sleep let's say uh, one second one second mean thousand milliseconds right so now i have to call uh, interrupt exception which is check checked exception so now when i execute this right so you will see uh, child thread always uh, print uh, step by step right so 
print one and wait uh, one second and print other one right so this is how the thread uh, thread sleep works it's sleeping right so you can put this into the like uh, let's say five seconds sleeping right so then it will sleep for five seconds so what happened if i want to interrupt this process i don't want to uh, wait up to the uh, five seconds right so and i want to interrupt it right so to uh, now now it is uh, the the sleep is in inside the uh, for loop right that mean only one time we can interrupt right so but we can see it right so i want to call the interrupt method on my, which thread i want to interrupt right so i because my friend went to sleep i want to go and poke him right i want to interrupt him like this so thread is going to sleep in this our case the printer which is the name by the thread thread is going to sleep right so now i want to interrupt that one right if you get confused we can rename this thread to the print thread but i don't think we need right so now you will see when i execute this one so main thread may complete its job right and it got the uh, interrupted exception right so it went to the sleep keep in mind when you interrupt a thread right so it it interrupt and it thread get wake up only that sleep movement let's say our example your friend went to sleep right so someone is looking for him you go and poke him and this he come back that mean he woke up he didn't wait for he didn't sleep for 30 minutes he uh, woke up in, within the 10 minutes now after that he go back to the sleep but this time the previous interrupt won't work. If you want to wake up again, you have to go and interrupt again, right? So one interrupt only work for one uh, sleep, right? It is the same behavior, same same usual behavior with the human, right? So you go to sleep, right? Someone come and interrupt you, you wake up. And then if you go to sleep again, that person has to interrupt again. If you go to sleep third time, that person has to wake up third time. That's what happening here. You can see only interrupted very first one. Right, so then it go to sleep again. Then uh, that doesn't affect. So now, let's change this. To we have to learn something new, right? So let's change this little bit different, like this, right? When the thread get the chance, when the thread get the chance, it wait to ten seconds, right? When the first time it get the chance, it wait for ten seconds and go to the print right so here i'm going to print i'm up okay so now this is the behavior right so now for a moment i'm not interrupting right so i comment out the interrupt so now execute this right this is a very interesting theory you must know because this is a other place people most go wrong right you can see it's waiting right so it's waiting and um, after that it's keep printing right it wait okay so if you want to print this timeouts you can see it wait right again so you will see main thread complete and now it's wait now child thread is wait because child thread got the chance and now child thread is wait for 10 seconds but see this one okay so you can see here main thread printing before main thread print before do anything now this time maybe this point maybe uh, child had not started even so i'm going to call okay um let me to do something let me to um, rename this because when i say thread you may get confused right so let's say rename this to um, rename this to print thread Because when I say thread, 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 so you may confuse with the, the thread class and the thread variable, right? So anyway, so now it's cool. So now print thread started. I want to interrupt the print thread. So I'm going to call print thread, right, dot interrupt. By this time, this is a very important theory to learn, right? By this time, maybe it not going to the sleep at all, right? So what happened if you call interrupt method? which is not sleeping right so what happen if you call interrupt method on a thread which is not sleeping so let's comment out this entire sleep block right so now 
Threat is not, not sleeping at all, but you are calling interrupt method. What is expectation? This is some typical interview question. Are you get exception or what going to happen? So, we execute. So, nothing happened. Child work, main work, everything is smooth, right? So, nothing happened, though you call interrupt. So, the answer is, if you call interrupt method on a thread which is not sleeping, doesn't do any harm. But, this is see the behavior. You have, the, your answer has to have a one more step. If I interrupt, okay, see this first. So, now I am going to execute. So, now you can see here, I am up. See, that means interrupt triggered, right? But it did not wait for 10 seconds at all, right? See again. Now, I am up in a different place, but child had printed 50, main had printed 50, nothing wait. Here is the rule. If you call interrupt method on a thread which is not sleeping, then interrupt is wait until at some point that thread go to the sleep or any waiting state. The moment it entered the waiting state, interrupt go and say, hey, wake up. Okay? It is like a security guard. <laughs> right? So, you put a security guard on a sleeping room, uh, on the door of the sleeping room. Okay? So, there is no one is sleeping, so he do not care. He is staying uh, uh, next to the door. Right? The moment someone enter into the sleeping state, he go and pop, hey, wake up. This happened right when you are sleeping on the classroom. Okay? So, teacher is there, right? Until you sleep, uh, teacher do not care. But the moment you go to sleep, teacher come and poke you, right? So, that is the same way interrupt work. So, map these things with the real world scenario. So, it is easy to uh, remember. So, anyway, so we discuss uh, yield, uh, sleep and also interrupt and we learn the uh, few new hidden theory. Actually, those are not hidden. Most people are not aware. That is it. Anyway, so I think uh, two more videos we need to go to. Yeah, I think two more videos we need to go to complete the entire thread process. We need to enter into synchronize, which is uh, again little uh, critical point to discuss, right? So, uh, subscribe to my YouTube if you are not subscribed yet and click on this bell icon. So, you will uh, get the notification when the next video released and also uh, like to my Facebook and follow on Instagram. Stay in touch. See you soon with the next video.